Welcome to Linear 2, Learning Outcome 2.2 Compare Various Theoretical Approaches to Mass Communication. We'll be comparing various theoretical approaches to mass communication, and this is important because it relates to your task 2 work, which is to choose one of these approaches and to discuss and determine the purpose and focus of the theory. So we have an introduction to the theoretical approaches, and this takes place beginning on page 115 which is distinguishing that there is macro and micro theories. Macro theories is relating to the investigation between the media and other institutions, whereas micro theory is looking at the link between media and its audiences. The link itself may be the content of the media being investigated, but there are also numerous content theories that is in here. McQuail looks at the relationship between media and society, media and culture, and the relationship between media and the information society. He also has his own quote at the um, top of the page, there is no neat system for categorizing the available theories. These typologies, PJF, are fragmentary and selective, sometimes overlapping or inconsistent, often guided by conflicting ideologies and assumptions. In other words, it's difficult to say that theory and research is only concerned with, for example, the relationship between the media and other institutions, such as politics or the economy. The same theory will also have to concern itself with media content, and media's content reflects with the relationship, the audience, and so on and so on. All theory will concern itself with some sort of component of a description, an interpretation, explanation, evaluation of the power of the media's role. And the emphasis when it comes to media theory is on the relationship between the media and society, the media content, and the media audience. So now we'd have to think about the power of media in these perspective and approaches. We'd also have to look at the media's effect on behavior, the functions of media and society from a theoretical approach. So we have these seven perspectives that has been named here, or they're also known as paradigms on page 116 to 117. And you need to choose one of these approaches to discuss in your task two and determine the purpose and focus, as well as providing research to this that goes beyond the textbook. You need to either choose the positivistic approach, critical perspective, meaning production perspective, the technological deterministic perspective, the information society perspective, the post-structures postmodern perspective, or the post-colonial Afrocentric perspective. Let's begin with the positivistic approach. This approach, its emphasis is on scientific method, which is all about analyzing the different data about a specific phenomenon such as that the, the vomit could be about media. We have some research ideas here, such as the 1989 book, Philosophy of Mass Communication Research, that could also place more emphasis on the study. But the purpose of it, in terms of the general focus of this part of the work, is to arrive at a scientific description of the world and of individual phenomena. When we are thinking about what its purpose could be is, is that it could be governed by universal laws through the application of the scientific method. And this is stated on page 117 in the paragraph there. Other methodologies that this part of the work talks about is empiricism, behaviorism, and functionalism. So empiricism is that knowledge will be derived through a investigation through the scientific method. Behaviorism looks at human behavior, observing the subject, the person, and their behavior for why they do things. And then we have functionalism, which is looking at how society functions to maintain equilibrium. As we go on into this section, you will notice that they unpack it a bit more about the positivism and mass communication in terms of this work. And then we have typical research questions of how this approach would work. It would ask, what effect does this have? What is the content? Because remember, this approach is looking at more scientific method of how to analyze something in an objective way, applying universal laws, and the focus most likely being behaviorism as a component there. In the typical research questions, we are measuring what is. And the classic questions that would be asked here is, who says what, in which channel, to whom, to what effect? So here we have some more examples of that, of the emphasis of how it would work. So maybe you'd like to choose this as your question. And as we go on, there's also criticism of this, but you will read that in your spare time. 
the next approach we'll look at is the critical approach. This is all about the emphasis on ideology, power, and equity. It's about how a minority ruling class can assert power over the masses, the majority, by influencing them with a main I, um, dominant ideology. So in this um, case, you can mention some of the research, and there are pioneers in this, such as Ferdinand Tonys, Emile Durkheim, and the Frankfurt School are all part of the, the sort of um, part of this theory. And the media's production of ideology is the focus of this theory in terms of the, you know, what is being spread here. The media will have an effect and influence the minds of the people. Um, they could also initiate their own ideas th through there by spreading the main messages of how to control the masses. And they can do this through different products such as high mass and pop culture. We also have a critical um, component to this of what is critical theory today on page 130. What exactly is ideology, in which case you can draw upon Karl Marx, Louis Althusser, Antonio Gramsci, and we also have assumptions of this theory about how it does work. And in this case, you'd have to look through and decide what is the purpose and focus of this theory. It is quite a long section and it has a lot of research, but I'm sure you're up to the challenge of this. And also what might assist you is on page 140 to 141, which is a power case study. We could say that the media has a sort of a way of influencing us in this theory. And this looks onto page 141, all the sort of critiques of it and the theory about it. But in this case, say that the media does have an influence on people's behavior. So maybe you can start to get the ball rolling on that mindset there. A little bit of a, a nudge, nudge, wink, there, um, wink, wink sort of thing. And then we do have a summary on page 145 to 146 that sort of ties in that sometimes the positivistic approach and critical approach can be very similar. But the positivistic approach does emphasize empirical scientific method, whereas at the critical approach emphasizes ideology, power, and the power of the elite on the masses and spreading those ideologies. Okay. Meaning production theory is looking at the phenomenon of symbolic interactionism. We also have some theorists in here. How is it possible to know what is real when we're attaching meaning to something that is being produced? Everything we know is filtered by our own experience. Herschel believes suspending your attitudes beliefs will allow you to look at something anew. So this means looking at something with a new impression or understanding. So this part looks at phenomena, um, phenomenology. <laughs> which is looking at the basic assumptions your reality is not given but a structure of meanings that we put to something so it's how we form meaning how we experience the world how we can make sense of it how we assume from our own experience and how it's all about constructing meaning it also looks at symbolic interactionism whereby meanings also socially constructed and looks at how the audience would construct and communicate meaning we also have basic assumptions of symbolic interactionism that looks at reality is not given by created by human beings, but by the virtue of giving meaning to their experiences. Meaning is embodied in symbols, for example, and the media play quite an active role in sharing that meaning and their construction of their social reality. Then we have semiotics, which is looking at the signs and codes conveyed in the meaning. And we have to be very aware about how the media can manipulate through signs and codes and manipulate our reality and how we will construct meaning. So by the media sharing certain images, certain music, and framing things a certain way, how can that, those certain codes, sort of construct our own meaning? In this case, they do give some examples of the different sort of codes, such as language, nonverbal, like clothing, body language, graphics and photos, voice articulation. And we have, have some examples on page 149 of this as well. We then move on to technology determinism, which is that the focus here is on the technology of mass communication and the nature of mass communication, its role in society and the lives of people. We're looking here at technology, technological innovation, social change, culture, and economics. It does start off with the evolution of communication that you learned about in the beginning of Learning Unit 2, which is the evolution of how mass communication had taken place. We also learn about Marshall McLuhan, 
that says that watching TV and listening to radio is going to affect your perception of reality. Because what we um, are receiving from the media is going to affect us in terms of how we perceive things and our reality. And what they can put out there is in terms of hot and cool media. Hot media can be film that gives us everything leaves little to the imagination, whereas cool media allows us to participate by filling in the missing data there. In that way, he argues that it's a sense of how it's changed the way we see things through media and also new media and affects our perception of reality. The next one is very short and it looks at the information society approach. The emphasis here is the role of ICE, um, sorry that is a typo, ICT not ICE, um, in, um, in terms of information computer technology and the quality of ICT here which is the increased production of new technologies out there and how that could have an influence on the audience. In terms of the increased interactivity of new media and how this does present to be dominant in our lives based off all the different sorts of communication that's out there, such as chat rooms or advertising and so on. In this set, there is consequences of dealing with this and there is focus in here as well as purpose in the nature of information society. There's also new and improved ways of accessing ICTs and the role of it. And the focus here is mostly about the access to ICTs and the participation in the world of ICTs and how has it affected people with the evolving of this. In the next part, we'll be concluding in the next video clip with the post-structures approach and concluding our theoretical approaches and learning in a two.